out there in Radio Land. This is Luella Parsons, your eyes and ears in Hollywood, at the sensational premiere of the new motion picture, A Midsummer's Night Dream, by the Warner Brothers. That's right, we have a night of culture ahead of us. A movie by the swan of Avon himself, Mr. William Shakespeare. And if he could see the excitement here tonight, he'd be swimming down that river as proud as a peacock. And don't let that word culture frighten you, my darlings, for the word on this movie is soft o entertainment from start to finish. And what else would you expect from a moving figure starring Mr. Dick Powell, Miss Anita Lewis, and Mr. James Cagney? What's this? Ah, uh, limousine's pulling up. Someone's getting up. Oh, my darlings, how exciting! It's the director of the movie himself, Professor Max <laughs> Reinhardt! Max, over here! He's coming this way. Ah, oh, Professor Reinhardt, Luella Parsons, welcome to the premiere of your new cinematic sensation. Ah, thank you, Luella. I'm, I'm sure you all know that Professor Reinhardt is considered one of the most distinguished directors working the live theater today. Tell us, Max, were you a little bit scared directing your first motion picture ever? Uh, no, not really, but I... <laughs> oh, no, not really. Oh, oh, Max, you are priceless. Now, tell, uh, now, do I hear a bit of an accent in your speech? Are you from abroad? Yeah, I am from Austria, but I... Austria? Oh, how adorable. And what brings you to the United States? <laughs> this is a funny story. It will make you laugh. So, there is a man in my country, and his name is Hitler, and he is killing people, and... <laughs> oh, yes, of course. And we are so happy you got away. What's this? Another limousine's pulling up. Oh, oh my God. It's, it's Dick Powell! Oh, oh. I'm young and healthy, and you've got charm. Dick! Dick! Dick, Dick it's Powell! <laughs> And for this, I have left my homeland. True, alternative is the Nazis, but this very close race is very close. So, <laughs> so why am I here, you ask? Uh, it all began one year ago when I found myself in this magical place called Hollywood. Land of glamour and gluttony, palm trees and poodles, sequins and sin. At this time, I had just put on big stage production of Shakespeare's masterpiece, A Midsummer Night's Dream. And they get raves and kudos you would not believe. Then I asked myself, why not make a film of this production using big, hotshot Hollywood stars? It would be a great contribution to world culture, a real treat for lovers of Shakespeare, and between you and me, I could make a few bucks in the process. So one year ago today, I go down to see Jack Warner of Warner Brothers Pictures. Mr. Warner, I say to him, you are a great man and famous producer, but you have not yet achieved the respect you deserve as a man of innovation and artistic vision. So what do you say about making a film of Shakespeare's classic, A Midsummer Night's Dream? You're an idiot. Oh, okay, but, but, but what do you say? Listen, Mel. Can I call you Mel? Sure, but my name is Max. Right, Max. Well, I've been asking around, and people tell me you're a smart guy. Is true. I am genius. Good. <laughs> then you'll understand this perfectly. It's a dumb idea. Am I right, Daryl? Yes, sir. Now, why do you think we make movies? Take a wild guess. To, to make artistic contribution to world culture. Wrong. We made movies to make money. They even start with the same letter. Movies, money. Ah, but what if you use that money to make movie of Midsummer Night's Dream? It's another M. And so is <laughs> Moron. It ain't gonna happen. But you could make it happen. You're an idiot. Fine. I'll take my project back to Adolf Zucker at Paramount. He is begging me for this picture. You're a liar! And he is right, of course. I am lying through my head. But just then, a miracle occurs, and she comes to the door like a fairy princess in a Shakespeare play. I'm a slut! Lydia! <laughs> That's what they call me, Jack. A slut! Get this! Photo Play Magazine! Top ten biggest sluts in Hollywood! Who do you think is number one? The queen of the sluts? Take a guess! You? Bingo! You got it, Jack! <laughs> and do you know why it's me? How do ya? Think of even all the stinking pictures that you give me! But honey... Good mom, mama! Remember that one? Or, ooh, my favorite! Hold my pistol! But those movies made you a star! A star? You call this a star? I'm in a French born Legion picture! Oh, Major Beverly, I get so frightened by those nasty heathens running for chutney. How will I ever get back to my ancestral home in Dundee, Scotland? But honey, honey. Don't touch me. Now, I want something decent for a change. Something with prestige. You're making a biography picture? Put me one in, in one of those. I'd be great in a biopic. I can play Madame Curie. Oh, listen to this. I wrote it myself. <coughs> Oh, Dr. Mendel, look at those squiggly things underneath the microscope. They look like they could cure something, something bad, like disease. We'll go 
call it penicillin. Oh, we just did a doctor movie about Louis Pasteur. Well, they ain't the same person, are they? Ah, uh, she's got a point. Hey, <laughs> How do you do, Max Reinhardt, famous director? Gee. Goodbye. Hey, where are you going? Alas, there's nothing for me to do here. I have just offered to make your boyfriend here a classic prestige picture. Shakespeare picture. Only he tells me he does not have leading lady to star in such a picture. That's a lot. Shut up. What's it about? It is about a fairyland forest ruled by a handsome king named Oberon. Wow. He and his helper named Puck devise a plan to use a magic flower that makes you fall in love with the very first person you see. Hey, this is really good. So they use the flowers on a group of lovers who have fled to the forest, one of whom could be you, Lydia Lansing, as the part of Helena, a ravishing maiden who only speaks in poetry. Holy cow! Don't listen to him. Why? Because you want me to appear in nothing but dreck? But how? I want this picture. Well, you can have it, because I'm going to make it. Am I right, Daryl? Yes, sir. Shut up, Daryl. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. And I'll say it slow and calm so it's really clear. You put me in this picture, you make it fast, or you ain't ever going to touch these hips again. Comprendo? So, very nice to meet you, Queen. See it. Son of a bitch! And just like that, it happened, and I was directing a film of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. And I can assure you that all four of Warner Brothers could not have been happier. That's a lie. Yeah, you're in the pants. It was that girl at Whittles. He's got a Hawaiian girl? Well, I'm not that kind of way. Would you guys just shut up and listen? Ah, the big shot's telling me to shut up. Harry, please, I'm telling you straight. This picture will be good for the studio. What about the plates were good for each? Papa always told us, stick to your legs. That's what he told us, stick to your legs. He was a shoemaker. And what's so wrong with a shoemaker? Are you saying Papa didn't work hard? He's criticizing Papa. Boys, would you just listen to me? I, this Shakespeare stuff ain't half bad. I read some this morning, and they even pots in English. I kind of like the title, Shakespeare. Sounds kind of like a biopic. It ain't called Shakespeare. It's called Midsummer Night's Dream, Sam. Then it'll put us in the crapper. Maybe we should get a read man. Maybe it's good. Oh, Morrison. Oh, yeah, I think Shakespeare fell to do it. He's <laughs> dead, you idiot. It'll cost us peanuts. I say we have to try to Boys, 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 boys! I happen to be head of production for this company, and we are making this movie. Whether you like it or not, end of discussion. Oh, home at last to the magic wood near Athens. A weary from a night of escapades and frolic, where lovers meet, embrace, and dream of immortality. Puck, Robin Goodfellow. Come here, here, my old friend, set as a shadow and free from the landing of the hood, night. Whither wander you, spirit? Over hail, over nail, through bush, through briar. Over park, over pail, through flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere. Such is the moon sphere, and I serve. Where in the depths of hell are we? I have uh, no I idea. Have one instruction. Lead us from Athens to the magic wood. But no, he has to flub it up. Flub it up? That doesn't sound like you. Could we be, uh, dreaming? We are such stuff as dreams are made of. Now that sounds more like your old self. Now shut up! I've just had one of the longest nights of my life. First, I have an argument with my queen. Then, I have to sort out four Athenians who are so excited by the sex of one another, they can barely keep their clothes on. <coughs> then, I drop the liquor of the magic flower on Titania's eyes. And she makes an ass of herself. Or, or rather, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so she couples with him. <laughs> Good joke. <laughs> then it's back to the lovers. We get them to bed. We see the play, we get them to bed. We give them our blessing. And at this point, I am so tired, I could drop. And all I ask is for a good day's sleep. But you can't even find the way home. But I know I used all the usual spells. I at the moon like a wolf. Ow, ow, ow! And then I rolled my eyes. And then I spun around three times to the left end. To the left. <laughs> You normally spin to the right. Right. I have a blockhead for a henchman, a cobble-padded, black brain, thick guy, three-suited, rabbit-sucking, ignorance is too good for him having no more brain than a Christian. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? I think we came to the wrong wood near Athens. Now listen to me and listen good. But who comes here? We are invisible and shall overhear their conference. <laughs> <laughs> 
Daryl, my boy, I need your help. I want you out of my office. Well, well sir, <laughs> may I say it's been not working for you? And no, I, you I, idiot! I, I'm not firing you! I'm assigning you this Shakespeare project. I want you to be Reinhardt's assistant. Me? That son of a bitch will try and spam me into the grave, I know it. That bastard goes over budget by one penny. I want to know about it. Yes, sir. And most importantly, keep an eye on Lydia. Lydia. She's one in a million. A million. I'm insane about her. You're insane. <laughs> that Lydia doesn't know Shakespeare from cheap dip. And if she so much as looks at another actor, I want her walking onto the set like a vision straight out of classical drama. What a costume. Gee, thanks, Jack. Pretty classy, huh? Well, kind of itches, but that's OK. You got to make sacrifices for art. Well, maybe it's just the underwear that's itchy. Can't be. Are you wearing any? Oh, now listen, I just got the script, and it's fabulous, real class. I mean, I didn't understand a single word. I'll send it to rewrite. Good, because there's a word in there with like 15 syllables. Oh, and guess what? I hired a vocal coach. This guy is really cute. He's Irish. I think. His name's Larry Oliva. Lawrence Olivier. Oh, yeah, that's it. Ah, he's big stuff. He just starred in a movie. How much are you paying him? Don't worry, I know how to pay him. Uh, wait, Lydia, come back! Daryl, stop her! Yes, sir. Lydia, come back! I'll pay him! I'll pay him! <laughs> well, at least it won't be boring. A brave new world that has such creatures in it. Oh, now what do I do? Someone's coming. Go quickly. Find us a way out of here. I go, I go! Look how I go! Swifter than arrows! Just just... Go! <laughs> hide me! What? Please, quick! Hide me! Where? And where? He. Miss Darnell! Until you haven't seen me. Get down. All right. Hey, you see me go walking around by here? Um, brown hair, red dress, this high. Yeah, that's her. No, I haven't seen her. Oh, come on, Mr. Reinhardt's looking for her. Sorry. She went uh, that way. Thanks. <laughs> the coast is clear. Oh, thank you for hiding me. I guess I panicked. Are you in trouble? No! No. Well, I mean, yes, a little. You see him in this movie. I play Hermia. I fought so hard for the role, you have no idea. I did screen test after screen test and memorized the entire part. Only a different part. I wanted to play Puck. Puck? I know you think Puck should be played by a boy, but up until this century, he was always a girl. He was? I had no idea. <laughs> anyway, I play Hermia, which is tremendous. It's my biggest break yet. And to play opposite Dick Powell, biggest heartthrob in Hollywood. He's such a sweetheart God in heaven. But then when I woke up this morning, I hadn't learned the lines, at least the way I wanted to. And now I just can't bear to face the great Max Reinhardt without being well prepared. So I'm trying to hide out to get some time alone to learn the lines. I'd look like such a fool if I didn't know them well. Do you see? It is perfectly clear. I'm Olivia. Oberon, king of the fairies. Oberon? Oh dear, I hope your heart's not set on it. Set on what? Oberon. Haven't you heard? The part's being cast. It's played by Victor Jory. What's a Victor Jory? Are you serious? He's a movie star. Where are you from? Outer space? No, but it's another world. Oh, I knew you were foreign. I can tell by the way you speak. It reminds me of a bell tolling in the countryside. When the soft wind did gently kiss the trees, and they did make no noise. Hey, that's from the Merchant of Venice. It is? I thought I made it up. <laughs> oh, God, that's him. I gotta run. No, stay. You'll be fine. I just told you I don't know all the lines yet. Uh, you'll be all right. Just speak the speech, I pray you. Hamlet. I thought you said it was Reinhardt. It is. Well, just do as I say. Oh, look, he comes. Where? Ah, ah there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. I was just taking a walk, that's all. And talking to. He was here just a second ago. All right, uh, it's fine. Now, listen, uh, I want to take a few minutes to run your first big speech in Act One. No, I mean, does it have to be now? Could we do it later? No, it is first shot of filming, and I want it to be extra good. Now, start with scream. Scream? Yeah, scream of frustration. You are angry that your father is not letting you marry a man you love. Go, big scream. Okay, <laughs> good try, but that was terrible. Uh, I want big scream, okay? Big, like high, big, go! Ah! Oh no, oh, that stunk! A big scream!
stream. I want big, you know what is big stream? It is opposite of little pathetic stream, okay? <laughs> ah! oh, all right, that, that was good. We move on. Now, remember, you are talking to the Duke of Athens, and he has just told you you must obey your father's rule and marry a man you do not love. Now, what do you say? I do entreat your grace. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not why. I know not by what power I am made bold. Your how it may. Your how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death. Either to die the death or to forever abjure in the society of men. Also will I grow so live so die, my lord. Ere I will yield my virgin patent up. And you turn slowly and look into the face of the man you love. Good Lysander. My good Lysander. I swear to thee. I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which knitted souls and prospers loves. And by the fire. And by the fire which burned the Carthage queen, when false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men broke, and number more than ever woman spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Magnificent! I am genius for choosing you. Come, we shoot the scene. Oh, please, just a minute. I'll be right there. I'll give you one minute. I am counting. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there you are. Where have you been? You were right. How could I thank you enough? I remembered every word, every syllable, and I was pretty good. Bravo. It was astonishing. It just took hold of me. Upon your words, sit laurel victory, and may smooth success be strewn at your feet. Anthony and Cleopatra. When? Oh, you're so silly. <laughs> you make me laugh. I don't think I've ever made anyone laugh before. I've made them frightened. Oh, I don't believe that. 58! 59! Oh. Miss Darnell! Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but don't forget the lines. You'll be fine, I promise. Oh, thanks again. I hope you get a part in the movie. Dear Mother, both filming has started and I get to play opposite Dick Powell and he's being so nice to me. Anyway, I met the most interesting man this morning. He's an actor trying to get into the film somehow and it's strangely inspiring. I like him very much. No, don't call Aunt Ethel and start planning the wedding. We're just friends and I may never see him again. Right soon. Love, Olivia. Hello? Anyone here? <laughs> Puck, Robin Goodfellow. Doc, good. Will Hayes. Hayes office. I'm looking for a man named Max Reinhardt. I know not where he is. Hey, you, uh, know not. <laughs> no. But I do wait till he'll return without delay. Oh, really? Have patience and endure, I urge thee. Well, let me suggest to that you cut it the crap and tell me where Max Reinhardt is right now. Don't be such a smart ass. Do you insult me? Call me villain? Break my pate across? Look, all I'm asking for is a little cooperation here. Is that so hard to follow? Sir, if you but ask, you'll get fair reply. If you demand, I'll have to take revenge. Revenge? <laughs> I will haze. Do you know what I'm capable of? A lot of wind, apparently. <laughs> All right, what's your name? I want your name right now. Let's go name Oberon, King of the Fairies. <laughs> All right, no funny stuff. I'm going to have you out on the street selling apples by tomorrow morning. Oh, I don't think so. You want a bet? Done. It's a bet. A fair wager. I'll have you begging me for forgiveness by the time I leave this place. Beg you? Plead with me, on your knees, like Niobe. All tears turn to stone, weeping for eternity. Puck! Oh, run up, hello! Man's a cracker, but he's insane. Hello, do I hear yelling on my set? Are you Max Reinhardt's job? Yeah? Oh, thank God, at last. Look, Will Hayes, Russian Code Administration. I'm afraid I have a few problems with your scripts. Oh, oh, really? Oh, wonderful. Well, I just found out that my Oberon, Victor Jory, he just quit. My puck, Mickey Rooney, broke his leg while skiing with his mother. So I am now out my two big stars, and you've got problems with my scripts. Will Hayes, Production Code Administration? Never heard of it. Wouldn't expect you to. A foreigner from East Europe, I presume. Let me fill you in. The Production Code is a set of rules to protect the American public from any movie that contains anything sexual, salacious, profane, or obscene. 
We look askance at scenes of sex, nudity, adultery, lust, passion, venereal disease, and childbirth. You have very good memory. I wrote the code. The request of the Legion of Decency, which is composed of millions of Americans who have pledged to boycott any movie that does not receive my seal of approval. In other words, no seal, no movie. Got it? Yeah, is very clear. Is censorship. No, it's the will of the people. <laughs> now let's discuss your film, shall we? Let's see on page 58, where a woman named Titana sleeps with a man who's been changed into a donkey. So... <laughs> it's disgusting! <laughs> if this bottom fellow has to be transformed, you can at least turn him into something human. It can still be funny, you can have a club foot or something. You must be stupid! Are you insane? <laughs> Mr. Reinhardt, here's a list of all the offending passages in your script. I suggest you clean it up. Oh, but Mr. Hayes, here is confetti, and I suggest you clean it up! I'll be back, you foreigner. I will be baiting, you native. Rock <laughs> <laughs> out what's going on around this place. We're in the future, and this place is sort of a theater. They put on plays here. That's what I heard, only they're called movies. Right. And when the people sit and watch these movies, they are not watching the actors themselves, just flickering shadows, which is very profound because it implies that nothing lasts forever. We are all just flickering shadows. Your images on the spleen. The screen! Right. Moreover, everyone here wants to be an actor. And why not? It's a great thing to be. They get paid enormous sums of money, get treated like gods, <sighs> do nothing to deserve it, and people call them moons. Stars! That's it. Oh, and here's the big surprise. Guess what their next movie is about? Us. Yes. Apparently, sometime in the past, we became famous. People love us. They read about us. Our exploits have been chronicled by a cowardly Indian named Shaking Spear. <laughs> People adore us. Well, everybody. Yes. No. That reminds me. There is a creature here who pollutes this place. He goes by the name of Hayes, and he insulted me. And I intend to make him pay for his crimes. Hayes. Uh, I have a plan. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering the most dulcet and harmonious breath that certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. Yes, I remember. At that very time I saw what thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain name he took at a fair vessel thrown by the west and shot his love shaft madly from his spear as to... Uh, Death, as to pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Oh. Yet marked I with the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple, with love's wound. And maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it upon sleeping eyelids laid shall make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me that flower, and be thou here again. Ere the Leviathan can swim a leap. Don't put a girdle around about there in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. You boys are good. How did Mr. Varner get you here so fast? Mr. Uh, Varner. Ja, that was terrific audition. Thank you, but what exactly is an audition? Ah, uh, that is exactly how I feel. There's no such thing as audition. We must be truthful every second. Now, let's continue. Uh, what are your names? Ha! Oh, King of the Fairies. Yeah, but that remains to be seen. I want your real names. Our real names? And Ralph. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, tell me a bit about yourself. Where did you last appear? Just outside Athens. We were playing at the palace. Oh, you guys played the palace. That is a very good venue. Uh, now, have you ever played Oberon and Puck before? Well, yes. <laughs> Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> uh, now, what about your film experience? Uh, what have you shot? Well, once I shot a unicorn, but I, I tried to get A unicorn? That was the title? Oh, it had no title. It was just a common unicorn. <laughs> All right, uh, well, gentlemen, I have good news. You are hired. Hired? I want you to play Oberon and Puck in my new film. In this film? Ja! You mean as actors? 
But hell and I love, who will not change a raven for a dove? Oh, don't suit you to me wrong, don't suit you to in such a disdainful manner me to woo, to woo, to woo, to woo. To woo. <laughs> Starlight sheen, where argument between jealous queen and king makes riot of the middle summer spring. A land of paved fountain and rushy brook, in the beached margin of the sea, we dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. Would you come to such a place with me? Oh, God, wow, look at the time! <laughs> Mr. Reinhardt being furious and grilling. Come on! I can't get over it. 
Why would they put me in a Shakespeare movie? <laughs> I can hardly speak regular English. That's easy for you to say. You're the great Jimmy Cagney. I'm in baseball movies. Ah! What's that? It's my costume. You're the movie. Oh, you're kidding me. Not at all. I thought you were playing a guy named Bob. I am, but during the movie, I turn into a donkey. And everybody gets scared and runs away, except for a fairy princess who uh, happens to fall in love with me. And this is by Shakespeare? Uh-huh. Frankly, I expected more out of him. Huck, Robin Goodfellow, where is that flower? Bottom? <laughs> what are you doing here? Making an ass of myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. How did you do that? I thought only I could take your head off. Well, then you haven't met Mrs. Gay. Uh, you two must be stars. He's the great Jimmy Cagney. Joe Brown, how are you? Uh, Hector. Oh, you're the new guy playing Oberon. Nice costume, though. You better do look the part. Uh, have you guys seen Ralph? Nope. Puck? Right here, my ladies. <laughs> what in the name of Venus are you wearing? They're called sunglasses. It's what the stars wear. Here, I bought you a pair. Try them on. <laughs> well, Honey, they were made for you. You like them? Uh, yeah. Sure do. Sure do. But we really, we really got it. Go. They're really nice, aren't Go. they? Yeah. You look beautiful. <laughs> Sire, this being a star thing is even better than we thought. Cash advance, great clothes, hot chicks. Hot chicks? You mean as in little braised poultry? As in women! Babes! When they realize they're a star, they're all over you. And here's the capper. You know they're giving that party tonight. Party? No. The studio gives a party after the first day of filming. It's tradition. So, guess what? I got us two girls for the party! One each. Mine's Heather. Yours is named Dolores. I got you a blonde. I thought you looked good with your coloring. No, I can't. You, you can't? No. But these are quality women. They talk and everything. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Just a minute. We left scripts on table. Commissary. I had to run back and get them. This one's yours. I'll keep it for you. Gotta go run again. <laughs> oh, wait. Olivia, my friend tells me there are revels planned for this evening. Would you do me the pleasure in accompanying me? To answer by the method? You may indeed, sir, with all my heart. We shall go coupled and inseparable, like Juno Swans. As you like it. <laughs> How very kind. If there be dancing, shall we rock the ground? Most definitely. But I must warn you, I'm a pretty good, uh, dancer. Well, so am I. <laughs> then pick me up at my place. Oh, I'll be the one with the eye shadow. The sunglasses. Oh, sunglasses. <laughs> Robin, did you see her? I would live in her heart, die in her lap, and be buried in her eyes. Well, I guess Dolores is out. Does she know how you feel? I think so. Does the difference in your age give you any pause? <laughs> I mean, of course! What's a few thousand years here or there? I think I'm going to go look for that flower again. You still haven't found it yet. My lord. Well, find it quickly. It's very important. I have, a, I have to settle something with the creature Hayes. The one who insulted you? Yes! All right, all right, I was just asking. I go, I go, look how I just go! Just go! Aww. Oh, hi. I don't believe we've met. I'm Dick Powell. I play Lysander. How do you do? Well, you see, I have sort of a favor to ask. It concerns Miss Darnell. Olivia, you see, I've just been talking to her, and, well, it's become clear to me that she thinks the world of you. She sees you as sort of a father figure. Now, here's the thing, and I don't exactly know how to put it into words, but I am just so in love with her. See, I met her a few weeks ago, we started talking, I asked her out, she said she couldn't go, and she really doesn't even know I exist. And, you know, I thought that maybe no, never mind. It's stupid. No. Go on. Well, I thought that maybe you could talk to her about me. Sort of get her in my corner. I mean, I bet she'd listen to you. I know she would. Well, that's pretty much it. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I, I guess it is pretty stupid. Uh, thanks for listening, though. Wait, Mr. Powell, I have an idea. I think I can help. You mean you'll talk to her? I'll do something appropriate. 
Thanks, pal. She was right about you. You're the tops. I don't think I've ever been called a pal before. <laughs> Welcome, Wander. Has thou that flower there? Here it is! I pray thee, give it to me. Mark me, Robin. Take this herb and seek through this place. Find a creature with handsome face. Be not deceived, tis design is foul. He'll answer to the name of Pal. Welcome to sleep and streak his eye so that the next thing he espies shall be a ravishing woman. Ooh, what woman? Anyone, provided it is not Olivia, for she is mine. Find some sacrificial virgin or something. It's hard to find a virgin. We're in uh, Hollywood. Oh. Look, just find her, find him, a woman and make sure he falls in love with her. But it cannot be Olivia, for she is mine. Yes, my lord, but I thought the flower was for Hayes. It was, it may be, but for now it is for Pal. Go to thy errand. I go, I go, look how I go, as swift as an arrow from the Tartar's book. Thank you for letting me finish it, O oh, King. <laughs> Dear mother, do you remember that actor I told you about? Well, I hope you're sitting down for this, because he just asked me to go to the party tonight with him. Ah! No, don't call Aunt Ethel. You know her. She'll have the wedding invitation sent out by sundown. It's just a date, and I may never see him again. Love, Olivia. Scene 143, the palace at Athens. Lights check. Set check. Lysander over here. Hermie over here. Quiet, ladies and gentlemen, quiet. Wait, wait, wait! Where is Miss Lansing? Miss Lansing! I just made the most incredible discovery! You know how you're always telling us to examine the text, like actually look at the words, discover new stuff and all? Yeah. And you know how I'm always saying it doesn't make any sense? Yeah. Well, I just discovered that some of his speeches make just as much sense if you say them backwards as they do forwards. Listen to this. One of my speeches, the way it's written. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, and yet you draw not steel. For my heart is as true as iron. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Okay, now backwards. You follow the power now, shall have I the power to leave. Steal as true as heart, not iron. Draw me up an adamant, hard-hearted you. <laughs> Right, in all of Shakespeare's scholarship, I, I can see whole book being written on Shakespeare backwards. Oh, gee! I want a film that is forward and on time, so into position yet. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think he's just jealous because he didn't think of it first. Are you ready? Rosen! And... Hermia, if thou lovest me, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood a league without the town where I did once stay for Helena. I will stay for thee. I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest foe, by his best arrow with the golden head, in that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. <gasps> Here comes Helena. Stop speed, fair Helena. Call you me fair, that fair again I'm safe, or backwards. I'm dead again, fair that fair you be called. minutes when my blood pressure goes down! Fifteen minutes, everyone. Sorry. Sorry. 
sorry, huh? Oh, you must be the new guys playing Puck. Oh, tis I! Sorry, but I have I'm to I'm Dick Powell. I play Lysander. Powell, the actor? Excellent, I've been looking for you. Uh, you have? Uh, yes, you must be getting very sleepy after all that filming. Very no, sleepy. Really, yeah. ah, nicely done, bad spirit. Now, thy eyes I throw. Oh, the power this charm doth owe. What thou seest when thou dost doink, do it for thy true love take. Love and language for her sake. Now I go and find the girl to tout the heart of this snoring churl. A back some woods to join the chorus. Heather or perhaps Dolores. Till I bring her, stay right here. Do not arise till thy appear. I'll wake you when the coast is clear. I am invisible. Oh, we trust it. Mr. Reinhardt, <laughs> I was wondering if you come. Uh, where is everybody? Hello? Hello? Well, I guess this gives me some time to look over my... Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a flower. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it smells so... Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, oh. Wow. Mm, tired. Ooh. A lot of lines. Never so in weary. Never so in woe. Be dabbled with the dew and torn with briars. I can no further crawl. No further go. My legs can keep no pace. My thighs. <laughs> hey, Joe, would you come on? No! Would you stop it? You look great. It's exact. It's exactly what the fuck goes. <laughs> I don't see why this is necessary. Because you were playing Thisbe, who was a girl. I thought I was playing a guy named Francis Flute. You are, and in the play that Francis Flute is in, he's playing Thisbe, which means you wear a dress, you talk like this, and you walk like this. <laughs> I don't know what girls you've been seeing. And I guess your big moment is when you kill yourself. I do? Yeah, see, you're in love with Pyramus, that's me. And there's a lion around, so I go wandering into the forest and see a blood of handkerchief on the ground. She's dead, I cry, but you're not really dead. I only think you're dead, so I kill myself in grief. <laughs> then you come along and you see me dead, and you kill yourself in grief. That's a lot of grief. All right, yeah, sure is, all right. Let's just rehearse. You stand over there, I'll stand here. Just start when you're ready. The Virgin! A Virgin! Where am I supposed to find a Virgin? Oh, whoa! <laughs> Full often hast thou heard my moans. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones. <coughs> oh, wait, Mercury, I'm getting an idea. <laughs> I see a voice. This be. This be. Their attention, please. James Cagney to the director's office. James Cagney to the director's office. I, uh, <laughs> I wonder what that's about. I'll be right back, Joe. I'll go with you. No, 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 no. For me? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor fellows mad. Oh, I see. That must be from the play. That's very good. I watch my moon, my star, my sun. More red to me than Irene Dunn. Oh, no, no, no. You see, you can't do that. With Shakespeare, you can't add lit. It's a big one. Oh, what is the matter? I must have hurt my back when I fell. Oh, you poor darling. I must suffer. Tell me, oh, what can I do to make it better? It's okay. No, please. Anything. Send me to the antipod, so the birds is inch of Asia. Anything to ease the pain? I'm all right, really. No, please. <laughs> it, it's not Anything! Better. Well, I guess I could use some aspirin. It shall be done at once. Now rest and stay. And if perchance I see along the way a little present, a ring, a diadem, or anything, will that be of interest? 
Hmm? Ha! Ah! Oh! 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 And for our turn, I will kiss it where it hurts and make it all better. He's a nice kid, but I think he's got a problem. Oh, this turned out even better than I expected. I must tell Oberon! Now, it might be just me, but I think there's something funny going on around here. Maybe if I sing, it'll go away? Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back. What angel wakes me from my... I pray thee, gentle actor, sing again. Your voice transports me to another world. So it's root, <laughs> root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. And yet your voice is nothing to your face. Your eyes are lips that must be grasping kiss. Hey, cut that out. You're teasing me, and it isn't very nice. I know why you're doing it. It's because I'm wearing this dress, isn't it? Well, I'll let you know. It's, it's not my fault. I, I've got to make a living, you know? Love looks not with the eye, but with the mind. And therefore is wing Cupid painted blind. Stop that. It's hurtful. <laughs> oh, if only like Titania, I had a train of berries here to make you happy. Ma! Peas blossom mustard seed! <laughs> Be kind to this gentleman and gamble in his eyes. I will have my love to bed into her eyes. I'm... <laughs> Come with me now. We shall go to the party where we both shall dance the night away. And every maiden there shall stare at me with longing in her eyes because you're mine. She'll be coming around the mountain. <laughs> No more singing. Come to bed and never change a hair on that sweet head. <laughs> ah, Hollywood, city of dreams. Like the wood near Athens, it is a place of magic. Anything can happen here, especially at a fancy schmancy party like this one on Jack Warner's estate. You see that? Leading man over there, big heartthrob. In January, he was a chauffeur driving other people's cars. Now he owns his own Mercedes Benz. A fun, sporty car. Made by Nazis! <laughs> <laughs> and you see that starlet right there? Six months ago, she could not pay her rent until she was spotted at a drugstore sipping on a cherry Coke. Now she has a pool in the shape of her own uterus. <laughs> Lives change overnight. Love affairs appear like lightning and then fade just as quickly. Dreams are a part of life, and when we dream, we bring back to the real world what we've learned in the land of imagination. And the guests, the guests at this party alone confirm that, yes, this planet has been visited by extraterrestrial life. Professor Rhino! And it stayed. <laughs> oh, Professor, I have so many questions to ask you about your upcoming film. I will answer them all on one condition. Dance with me. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> party, party, party. I'm getting bored with them already. Not really, huh? Well, that secret, this is fun. I wonder where Olivia is. I thought you were bringing her. I thought I was too. But then I couldn't find her. No, oh, she'll be along. No, guess what? I found someone for that Powell creature, 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 creature to mate with. Here she comes, in full sail. <laughs> I still think this is wrong. And love is wrong, and fate and destiny is wrong. Oh, my darling love! But why can't I wear my normal clothes? <laughs> Aren't these a bit much? Because this is how I fell in love with you! But why me? I'm just a character actor. Love and raising keep with company nowadays. Well, I guess I was okay in some of those baseball movies. 
Oh, how I'd love to see you in those pictures. Well, you sidled to the face, held out your big, strong fat out in front of you. And then fastball down the middle of the plate. And wham! It's a home run. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou. And then another, and another. Wham! Oh, wow! Wham! Oh, my! And then it's out with the glove. Oh, that I wear a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Dance with me now, you mad fool. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, okay. Now I admit it. <laughs> Something went wrong. Something went wrong. I don't know what happened. She must have gotten some of that flower in her eye. Oh, oh really? Do you think so? You spongy, phonic parasites called oh, you lump of wind, you fanderly puke sucking. I admit it. I made a mistake. I must have dropped it someplace and she must have picked it up. And now it's behind her ear. Right. You useless Blackbeard measles. Get it back. We can't have a thing like that floating around Hollywood. That's all they need. Another reason to copulate. Yes, my lord. But more important, find the antidote. The antidote? To release her from the spell. I know what it is. I just don't know where to find it. Well, then perhaps you should find it very quickly. Where the hell is Warner? Get her right away. Ow! <laughs> Lord, I hate these parties. Look at this. Little tramp Claudette Colbert spilled her drink on me. They say I'm unreasonable. Everything's my fault. They don't know anything about me. I'm not against art. I happen to love beautiful things. Real beauty. Like little furry animals or flowers. Like that one there. So beautiful, so fragrant. <laughs> Will Hayes hates all this. Did you say Hayes? Here. No! <laughs> In my eye. Maybe I can get it out. <laughs> but soft, what light through thou yonder window breaks? <laughs> it is the east, and I the sun. My God, just look at that face! I could hop forty paces down the street and make effect perfection. I could build a willow cabin at my gate and let the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Will Hayes, Will Hayes. My God, his beauty truly blent. Oh my God. No wonder everybody's frowning at me all the time. They're all jealous. They all want to be me. To be or not to be me, that is the question. <laughs> My God, just look at that face. So strong, it's so vulnerable. So harsh, it's so playful. To men, it's kind, noble, or the common touch. I've decided there'll be no more compromises. Lead on, Macduff. Lead on. Lydia? Lydia? Where the hell is she? Hello? Hello? Just look at all this opulence. I've got two tennis courts, four squash courts, I've got a boathouse, and this is a drop of water within 15 miles. And there's flowers all over the place. Ah. Look at me. I'm a mogul. And I fell in love with a girl like Lydia. Ah. Lydia, a chorus girl. You know, on our first date, she turned to me and said, Jack, I want to star in one of your movies. And I said, are you crazy? She just looked at me with those liquid eyes and said, what's the use of dating a producer unless he makes you a star? <sighs> that Lydia, if she knew how much I loved her, she made my life a living hell. Uh, Daryl! Yes, sir. Where's Lydia? Have you been keeping an eye on her? Yes, sir. And there's been no funny stuff? Funny stuff? Men! Has she been entertaining anyone in her dressing room? Offering them a little chips and dip, putting on a spread, as it were. <laughs> no, sir, I didn't know she cooked. That's a metaphor, you idiot! Has she been fooling around? No, sir. Good! I'm asking you, because tonight could be very special, Daryl. I'm thinking of popping the big question. Look at this ring. That's quite a pop, sir. Ah, I just want her to be happy. That's all that matters. Just as long as she's not happy with anyone else! Remember what she told you, sir. She has a really big surprise planned for you tonight. Ugh, the vixen! Daryl, my boy, my only hope is that one day you find a girl half so good. Oh, my darling! My darling, my darling, my darling! Oh, Daryl! Uh, 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 what's going on here? Jack, go away! What's past is past. I found my beacon in the night at last. So you haven't, sir? Is this a joke? A joke! I'm gonna 
Ottinger from Dixon, Illinois, would end in Hollywood, hobnobbing with the rich and the reckless, the base and the brazen, the vile and the vicious. It's a dream come true. <laughs> Such a night, Trollus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls inside toward the Grecian tents where Cressid lay that night. In such a night stood Dido with a willow in her hand upon the raging sea banks and walked in her love to come again to Carthage. In such a night did Oberon fall in love with a mortal named Olivia and vowed to be with her forever. Dear mother, call it Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> Picture. It says that everybody in the place was drunk. By 
fights broke out. Screaming was heard. They were making out on the grass. It says there was even some transvestism. Well, transvestism. <laughs> <laughs> My guy is a this weird stuff. Jackie, baby, I'm your brother. Why didn't you invite me? Yeah, it wasn't that bad, I swear to God. <laughs> Tell that to hey, he's announcing a press release on guess which studio. And he says he's gonna close your picture unless he gets compliance with his script demands and an apology from Rhino. So I'll get him to apologize. You better or we'll up the creek. We've got a lot of messes in this film already. Over half a million, I checked this morning. Half a million? Something like that is more than I can count. Boys, 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 boys! Will you give me a break? No, say! <laughs> I don't know what happened. Did I start off so nice? The wrong punch was too strong. <laughs> I have had a dream. Pass the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd better get to wardrobe. I had a wonderful time last night, and don't forget we're having lunch together. And dinner. And breakfast. I'm a fun of those round, crispy things with the indentation. <gasps> Waffles! Master, I must speak to you right away! <gasps> Master? Oh, that's just his little joke. <laughs> so <Hi>. funny. <laughs> See you later. I'm sorry, sir, but this is dire news. So important that you have to interrupt. Yes, look at this! <laughs> Torpedoing! That was it. I don't know why or how, but in the middle, middle of the night, I felt this sort of tingling. Then since dawn, I've been having visions of the wood in your essence. Ours, the real one. I think we're going home. Oh, we can't. Not now. I agree, it isn't fair. I'm a star. All these women, they think I'm adorable. Can't you reverse it? I don't know how. Oh, God in heaven. I wonder how much time is left. Time. It was just about this time we arrived here yesterday. Oh, that's it. From sun to sun, 24 hours. How much time does that leave us? 20 minutes. I have to find Olympia. I have to find a girl that's willing to make out at 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> Hayes will be here any second. Now what did you say to him? I was reasonable. I listened to what he had to say, and then I told him he was a Nazi pig. Look, <laughs> the fact is, if he says there will be no movie, there will be no movie. He can pull the plug. So pull the plug. But we have $500,000 invested. Not my money. <laughs> Sorry, keep breathing. Sorry, keep breathing. I can see the eye. That was quite some party you threw last night. Did you? Enjoy yourself? No. I despised it. He stabbed me for company. I believe you two know each other. Whatever he says, I take the Fifth Amendment. Oh, don't even talk to me, you hypocrite. You tried to get on my good side last night, didn't you? V what? You have a good side? Ah, he's kidding. That's a joke. Here's a joke for you. You have 15 minutes to agree to my alterations, or I withhold the lead certificate. In other words, you may as well stop filming, because your movie won't get made. So what do you say? What can I say? I can't give in to this censorship and bullying. That's just what happened in my country. And look what happened! And your movie won't get made! Fine! Wait! You said you give us 15 minutes! And I keep shooting to the final minute. Final second! I agree! Shut up! You'll hear from us. You'll hear Bubkis. You! In my office! Now! Which way's your office? That way! That way! How dare you yell at me like that? Olivia? Olivia, where are you? Oh, great. It's you again. Have you lost it your way? Or are you waiting to appear it in the movie? I have to warn you, sir. I am in no mood for this. No mood for this, you two-bit belly actor! I can end you in one second. And don't think I wanted to tell foolish mortal! <laughs> don't you know what I could do to you? What I could turn you into? Uh, a meddling monkey? Or a busy ape? A lion, cat, or bear? Good morning. <laughs> Is he all right? No. He has a rare medical condition. He makes other people sick. Ugh. Well, I hope you get better. I gotta run. We're shooting my big scene this morning. Do you have anything to say? I don't know how you did that. Probably has gas or something. But I can sue you for assaulted battery. And don't, don't you mortals ever learn? You keep making the same mistakes over and over. You don't believe. Come, quickly! We are losing time, hurry! I have an idea. Come! <laughs> hurry! Everybody, take <laughs> 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 Stop! Have 
15 minutes, and I'm about to get this in one take. So everybody act happy, don't touch me. Or I'm, stand up, <laughs> stop. I have to see. I don't really? care about your needs. We have 15 minutes, and I want to get, I swear to God, 14 minutes now, all right? Okay, we start the scene. Everybody happy? Okay? Um, um, uh, I'm sorry, but why is Helena happy again? Because she just married the man she loves. Oh, is this her first marriage or her second? Her first. Did she have a prenup? She'll agree. I don't know what she had. No, please, we are losing time. <laughs> all right. You are at the palace in Athens, and you are about to watch a play entitled Pyramus and Sisby. All is well, and love has triumphed all. Ready? Go. <laughs> Who's that? What is it? What do you want? I can't talk! <laughs> Maybe he's from wardrobe? I'm not! <laughs> well, you better cut it out. That's an expensive costume. And it's mine. Now take it off. I can't! <laughs> Boys, take it off him! All right, Fuzzface, don't move. I got him. I got him. My pal. Please stop! Who are you? Will Hayes! <laughs> Will Hayes? <laughs> That's Will Hayes! Will Hayes? That's good. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's writing something down. He says, if you remove this ass head, I will withdraw my objections to the film. <laughs> but, but it's stuck like glue. Wait, he continues with, I believe the actor who plays Oberon can do it. The son of a bitch. <laughs> Good, but, oh, but there is Oberon. I am right here. <laughs> Uh, why not? It's oh, Will Hayes! Will Hayes! Hey, Will Hayes! What the hell are you doing? How dare you? How dare all of you? I can stop your foolish movie in a second! Oh, uh, no. But look what you made. <laughs> you made a contract! <laughs> Fine. Make your stupid movie. I'll be back with revenge with a lot of you. in a break, and when we come back, we continue shooting. I will go back. Jack, Lydia, I don't know you forgive me, but what, what did you, you say? say? You go first. Oh, no, please, be my guest. Well, I was just saying I know you'll never forgive me for uh, hitting you like that. And I thought you'd still be mad at me for making such a fuss over Daryl. Oh, I don't know what happened. It's like my brain had a seizure or something. I was so jealous. You were magnificent. I was? Like Othello when he thought that his DC demonia was being unfaithful. Lydia? The Shakespeare stuff really gets to you. Well, in that case, I have a question for you. Will you marry me? Well, I have a question for you. Do you still have that three carat ring? Lydia. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Of course they want to marry you. And then I can really boss you around. Now, where's my ring? Ah, 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 ah. Right here. <laughs> it's so sparkly. And expensive. <laughs> oh, I have a great idea for your next movie. Another Shakespeare. War and peace! Oh. <laughs> that any time now. No, Lord, what fools these mortals be. Yet there's some greatness about them. I'll be meeting you in the parking lot. There you are. Olivia. Lunch? I can't have lunch. Oh, we'll get dinner then. I can't have dinner with you. Why not? Because I am leaving. <laughs> what do you mean? I am leaving here in, in a few minutes. And when do you get back? I'm not coming back. I can't. I'm sorry. But why? Why are you leaving? Did I do something wrong? Never. You can't just walk away. There must be some reason. You have to trust me. It can't be stuck. No! I don't want you to go! Trust me. Please! I love you! Don't go! Don't you know how I feel? Shh. It'll be all right. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox slips and nodding by the crows, quiet over canopy and luscious with vine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy. And with the juice of this, I streak your eye, so that the next thing you espy shall be the only love that you recall. And 
You shall never dwell on me at all, feel the ache of grief, the tear of pain, and only in your inmost dreams will I remain. Hey, your, your friend said you wanted to see me. Yes, I have to go now. Olivia, is she asleep? Yes, she is waiting for you to wake her up. You don't mean you talk to her. Wake her and see. Hello? Was I asleep? Oh, Dick, oh, Dick, it's so good to see you. I I'm only here because of... Where did he go? Oh, I had the most interesting dream. I thought I was in love with a spirit of some sort from a, a different world. It sounds like a pretty nice dream. It was. Say, would you like to go get lunch at the commissary? I'd love to. And then maybe after dinner we could go dancing if you'd like. I do have to warn you, I'm a pretty good dancer. Oh, I'll be right there. The next morning, Victor Jory called and asked for his job back as Oberon. Uh, by the end of the week, Mickey Rooney's leg was healed and he came back to portray Puck. Two months later, shooting was finished. Six months later, the movie was released. Sadly, I did not direct any more films in Hollywood, but I will tell you this. I'll never forget what I learned in that year of shadows. Goodbye. Goodbye.